Mr. Frank Shane, 39 and 1, 33 knockouts. Good looking. There you see him there. It looks like he's happy to be here. I hope he isn't just too happy. The tail of the tape, they are both 25 years of age. And interestingly, as Gil Clancy pointed out, Hutchie actually taller than Thomas Hearns. And he came in at 153 and three quarters. Hearns at the limit of 154. The reach advantage, of course, still remains with Tommy Hearns. And Ray Leonard and I were talking earlier that he may have the longest reach in ring history. Uh, that 78 inches would be hard to beat. And of course, he is very broad shouldered. And he uses the reach well. It's been a, a gift that he has had, and he has used that gift well with a very powerful jab. Arthur Mercanti is the referee. The scoring is on the 10-point plus system under WBC rules. 12 rounds. The distance, Tony Perez of New York, Eva Shane of Fort Lee, New Jersey, Dickie Cole of Dallas are the judges at ringside. Hutchings and White, the champion Hearns in goal. Now, will Hearns try to come out and get Hutchings out of there early as he did against Duran? Will he be determined to show that the hit man was back for more than just one bout? I see a mistake already from Fred Hutchings, Tim, and that's the jab, the left jab of Fred Hutchings. He, he brings it back too slowly. He's dropping that left jab, so look for the right hand, the counter right hand by Thomas Hearns. Uh, Tim, H Hutchings also looks very, very tight right now. If you get nailed when you're tight, Tim, it's going to be curtains. And, and Tommy is very, very relaxed in here. Well, I think most of the prognosis uh, was that if uh, Hearns was going to stop Hutchings, he would do it early. And there's a solid left landed by the champion. But that if Hutchings got by the first two or three rounds, this could be a very interesting fight, but he's wobbled already. Hearns is after him, and he's got him in trouble. Hutchings trying to survive. And he did a good job of escaping there, Ray. But you should hold on and well, at this point now should move and clear that head. Because Tom is going to throw it, just a barrage of punches once he gets his man hurt. Tim, but Hutchings is reaching for Hearns. He's walking into Hearns. It's the worst thing he can do. Hutchings still wobbling. But now finally getting a clinch around Thomas Hearns. As Ray Leonard suggested he should have done immediately. But he did escape the worst damage after the first combination that wobbled him. He's Watch reaching in with that jab, Tim. Watch for the right hand because Tommy Hearns should, should count that uh, left jab. His eyes are a little more clear now. Looks like he's got himself back together, but he is still very much a target. For Hearns, there's a solid left hook landed by the champion. Wide open for a right hand. Hutchins is wide open for a right hand, Tim. He reaches in with that left jab. There it is again. Hutchins trained by Noah Cruz, who had the champion Carlos Palomino. Just been with him the last month. Under a minute to go in the first round with the champion having staggered the challenger Hutchings, but he stayed on his feet. Can we mention that Hutchings' height might bother Hearns? It's the other way around. Hearns' height is bothering Hutchings. Big Mouth right hand. comes out on a big right hand. Hutchings in difficulty again. Hutchings does not have the experience. He's not been in the calorie fight. Right hand, right hand and down he goes. Hutchings, who was backing up as he was hit. Under 30 seconds to go. Tim, here's where the second phrase that the bell rings so he can get his fighter back and straighten him out. Tommy has to get him out of here. He's got 20 seconds to do it. Hearn pounding away. And with the mouthpiece out, his, his lip is cut now, Tim. He's in bad shape. An overhand right sending Hutchings down for the second time. Tim, there's seven seconds left. He may make it. Five seconds. I don't think so. I don't think he's going to survive this round. And the bell should ring. And there it does. Bell. So Fred Hutchings picked up his own mouthpiece. So he at least was together enough to do that. But he is a young man in some difficulty. As the hitman came out doing what most people expected he would, go right after his opponent, as he did against Roberto Duran. We're going to show you the knockdowns in the first round. First one came off a stunning combination. Big right hand. Down he went. That's the second knockdown there, I believe. And so the crowd here of Hearns fans chanting two, 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 I believe is what they're saying. They want him to stop him in two. If we can interpret that correctly. Arthur Mercanti takes a good look at Fred Hutchings. His hammer, Noah Cruz, and Benny casing in there to try and rally this young man here has been through a difficult first round. 
the area, it's funny because the areas that they figured that uh, Hutch, I mean, Hearns would be uh, susceptible to counter punching. Hutchings has fallen prey to those uh, same mistakes. That's right. Hutchings is doing all the leading. He should be patient. There, there he is leading again. Every time he, he leads, he leans in. He has the world title bout, no doubt, as affected the start of the uh, performance by Hutchings today. Tim, it's an amazing thing. In the gym, all he was doing was waiting and fainting and looking to count the punch. As soon as the fight starts, he forgot everything he worked on in the gym. Well, he, uh, Hutchings also is straight up, but also he can away a couple of inches. Well, it's is so high because he's stooping there, down. There he reached in again. Tom, at this point, is going to kick his shots. Big left hook. He's nice and relaxed, Terrence. And the left hook has been a very effective form by Thomas Harris. It's just a matter of time, uh, Tom, because Tom has the experience. He knows exactly what to do when his man is hurt. He's not rushing himself, which uh, we had questioned as far as overconfidence was concerned. He's taking his time, picking a shot, and waiting for an open where that he can put some combinations together and get Hutchins out of there. Hutchins have been unable to reach her so far. That's right, Tim. If Hutchins can land the punch, until maybe Tommy will have a little respect for him. But right now, it's all Tommy's own way. Little blood from the nose of Hutchins. Goal. McCandy, the referee, second round, scheduled for 12, and it was nearly over in round one with a pair of knockdowns by the champion Hearn. Now Hutchings is leading from the nose, Tim. Getting a little closer to Hearns, though. Landed a couple of jabs. Hutchings has a good solid jab and a very tough left hook, but he's been unable to get near the champion. Here's a right hand landed by Hearn. Hutchings punching back. Under a minute to go in round two. Big right hand and another one by her. Hutchings in difficulty again. What's doing the most, what has done the most damage has been the left hook thrown by Thomas Hearn. Hutchings, his game notes him. He's winging back, missing, but he's winging back. See, he keeps reaching in, he keeps leading. He's got to get himself together. Under the 30 second mark we go. Round number two. described of Hutchings have just not been demonstrated here because he was hurt in round number one and is still just trying to get himself regrouped so we haven't seen anything of what he can really do. Champion in command as we wind down round number two and Hutchings is going to get through this one as well. And he lands a right hand. Round number three, the champion Thomas Hearns having Fred Hutchings the challenger in all kinds of difficulty in the first two rounds. Two knockdowns in round one. Hutchings managed to stay up to round two, but has been unable to get close to the champion who's been in control totally. Tim, Tim, when you get nailed early like that, that's the same as a sprinter in the 100-yard dash falling down at the starting line. It's tough to get back once you get a bad start like that. We are live from Saginaw, Michigan on CBS Sports Saturday. Tommy's left jab, Tim, has been very effective, He's very consistent. In fact, there's a slight swelling on the left side of uh, Freddie Hutchinson. Hutchinson, and uh, he's on okay. He's not stable. Well, his conditioning certainly uh, has enabled him to go this far because he was really banged around in round one and again in round two, and here he is still trying to regroup, regather, get back to his fight plan. It's basically a counter-punching fight plan. Tim, he has a great trainer in Noah Cruz. He's a great condition. I knew the fighter would be in great condition for the fight. Stockton, California, looking in, no doubt, with some concern at this point. He's a little more settled down now, though, Tim. He's not reaching as much. He thinks he has to initiate the action all the time, and he doesn't. Tommy now is going to his left jab downstairs and upstairs, which I feel he's going to come over with the right hand. There he tried to throw the right hand. He's trying to set this man up. Great Hutchins, 27 and 1, 17 knockouts. Turns 39 and 1 with 33 KOs. Family here in attendance at ringside. Mom, and brother Steve, who just won a gold medal in the Olympics. Another brother, a grandfather, four sisters, and assorted other relatives. A right hand, a power right hand by Tom would be so beautiful, Tim, because Freddie Hutchins, he's in position to be hit by that uh, right hand. You notice the left jab, he sticks it out and drops it. Another minute to go, at least 
least he landed that left jab on his last try. Turns with a reach advantage. Hutchings with a one-inch height advantage. Tim, they the same weight, but Tommy Hearns looks twice as big on That was the right hand. That was the right hand. The counter right hand by Thomas Hearns. Because Hutchings reaches in with that left jab and steps forward with that left foot and doesn't follow back. Tommy Hearns having some fun in there now, and he hurt him with another right hand lead that time. And Hutchings again doing the right thing after being stunned. And now the, the, one of the handlers up on the corner looked like he was trying to stop the fight from the Hutchings corner. There's a right hand by Hearn and a combination. Hutchings won't go down. A handler stepping into the ring from the Hutchings corner, trying to get the referee to stop the fight. And Mercanti does. Hutchings handler, I believe that's Benny Casey, stepped into the ring during the action, trying to get the referee to stop it. And Mercanti, the referee, has stopped the fight. And it is a third round knockout for the champion, Thomas Hearns, as young Fred Hutchings just never got himself into the bout. He was knocked down twice in the first round and never got started, never recovered from that battering, managed to get through round two. And then in the third round, Thomas Hearns again had him in difficulty. And finally, the corner just begged him to stop it. And the referee, Arthur McCanny, stepped in. Tim, when you look at Hutchings' face, you know that the hitman is really back. No question about that. Well, he was in against an opponent who was really much better than he appeared in this fight. I'm not just saying that because we built him that way. Watching Fred Hutchings in his earlier fights and on videotape this week, and in his preparation, he was very much ready to be a competitive fighter today. But those early knockdowns with Hearns coming out as strongly as he did in round number one, just never gave Fred Hutchings a chance.